oil pump is too high pressure, way too high pressure. At idle, we get about 50 to 60 PSI, and at 4,000 RPM, we're at at least 100 PSI, which is a little insane. We got a kit that is the oil pump and pan and everything we'd need because this is stroked, which means that the oil pan has to have a little bit more clearance for the longer crank. Uh, but the pump that it comes with is a high volume and high pressure pump despite the listing on Summit. So we bought another pump. This one is the, exactly the same one, but standard pressure, standard volume, and we're going to swap it. It should be easy because it's only one part and a gasket. So I'll see you in three days. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our oil filter and this is our oil pump plug, or this is our oil, pan. Our oil pan plug. Drain plug, plug, whatever. That's, this is our oil pan bolt. You'll notice that these are uh, very close. So the only way for us to take the pan bolt off is to also take the, take the oil filter off first, which is a huge pain and I hate it. <laughs> uh, oh, but you can see our nice colorful transmission down here. Okay, this is where you get covered in oil. In theory. Yep, there it goes. It's nice new clean oil though. Oh no! It's really clean oil. There we go. Filter done. Now we just gotta drain the oil. Uh, but yeah, so this oil filter holder is where the oil filter goes onto. And it's got oil lines that go to the radiator. And the lines are gonna be on the way of us getting rid of some of these bolts. So we need to remove this whole thing first. Good work, Phil. What size is this? Quarter inch. Quarter inch for the oil filter Allen bolts. Oil filter holder Allen bolts. Man, dude, this is a uh, tight. <laughs> I need to get this off though so I can put a bag around it so that we don't get covered in oil while we're down here. One more thing about the high pressure oil pump. The higher pressure your oil pump is running, the more horsepower it eats. So by having a less pressure, so GM recommends having uh, something like 10 PSI per thousand RPM. So at 3000 RPM, it's like, 30 PSI, or I think other people say that it's 30 PSI plus 10 per thousand. So at 1,000 RPM, you should be at 40 PSI, and at 4,000 RPM, you should be at 70 PSI or so. But our 100 PSI is way too high, and we're gonna lose a lot of power that because of that, and we're also going to uh, do damage to our bearings. Yeah, we need, a, we need this to be somewhere like out of the way, like this. If I could zip tie it right there, that would be amazing. It would be not in our way. But I don't have any zip ties. I can't zip tie it anywhere. Oh, or even like way up here. Oh man, that'd be great. Okay. I think we need to make a, a zip tie run. So we just zip tied this out of the way. Cool. Now we gotta start taking the pan off. All right, Phil. Well, I guess we just uh, start going for it. So it looks like our oil pan studs, our ARP oil pan studs, are coming out with the nuts. Um, we might have to separate these later and put them back in. Just studs first, but we'll see. So this bolt is a little too close to the uh, pan, and our sockets don't actually fit around it. So we'll have to figure this one out. <laughs> oh, this one's like loose. <laughs> uh, that makes sense. I probably didn't put it back. <laughs> Cause I was like probably messing with it and I was like, okay, well, I don't want to do that one. So. Okay. That's it. That's the pan. Oh, it's so close. Oh, it's so close. No. That's definitely hitting the crank. Yeah. Damn. That's unfortunate. Oh, man. Well, this just became a bigger task than I was hoping it would turn out to be. So now, in my experience of working in a professional shop, I learned a neat little trick. Hopefully this helps you guys out. You put your foot right behind the wheel here and then you put your hand here 
and you push back, and it slips right in. Look at that. That was way better than my method. Where do you put your hand? Handle on the back. And then you push back on this. Like that was a, a lot easier than what I was trying to do. <laughs> like a pro. <laughs> So usually we have this, and this hooks on to our engine mount, and then we have these four anchor points that you anchor on to like the intake, to the four corners of the intake, and then you lift the whole thing up with this. The problem is our engine hoist doesn't get tall enough with this engine as high as it is because of how low all these chains come. So if these chains were higher, then maybe it would work. Oh, actually, not, not quite, because once we spread out this, load over the middle of the engine, Ugh. this part will hit the uh, carb. So we're trying to avoid that. We're going to do the water pump and the power steering pulley, or the Bracket? AC compressor delete pulley. Delete pulley? OK. That way, I don't feel like I'm going to rip your water pump off. All right, so we got the engine hoisted up out of the way, so now this should just Slide right out, yeah, buddy. Sweet. And there's not that much metal in here. I would say very little amount of metal in the pan, which oh. is good. Oh, what did you do, Phil? It just dripped right yeah, on Yeah, that's my not too crotch. bad. We can live with that. Sweet. That, that's all we need. Then we need to uh, pull the pump out. <laughs> Put that on the ground. Ooh. So it dripped on your crotch? Yep. Nice. Looks like we might need a 10 mil and something big as heck. Oh, the big one right through the middle? I think that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's tight. You want a gun? Yeah, you want a gun. Yeah, give me a gun. Is your gun going to be strong enough? Yeah. Want a real gun? You say that like this isn't a real gun. Oh. <laughs> he takes back his statement. I do. I didn't mean it. Oh, they're gonna keep it on that. There you go, look at that. <laughs> Came right off. <laughs> now that's a real gun. So here we have our pumps. This is our new pump. This is our also new pump, but the wrong pump. Um, it's not like it's bad or anything, but it's just too high flow for our use. So we need to take this piece off and move it onto here. That's it. Should be should be pretty uh, pretty pretty simple. Boom! One bolt. Okay, so here we go. This needs to come out of here. When we got this in, we hammered it in pretty good. I think it was with it even a real mallet these things have really tight fits. Actually the number one complaint of this pickup is how hard it is to install. So, and just, well that was easy. <laughs> I'm going to take these two bolts off. Put our pickup in. Maybe it just slides in. Oop. That's fine. All I need to do is not cross thread. Oh, that's in. Boom. So we finally got this lined up enough where we can get the bolts in without cross threading them. Uh, we couldn't find a torque spec for the pickup bolts, but people do recommend to use red Loctite on them. So we're going to use red Loctite and then we're just going to make them snug with the regular torque wrench, not the power wrench. Ugh, that should be tight enough for that one, and that should be tight enough for that one. Okay, other thing that we're replacing is our copper oil pump gasket. This pump did not come with one. I bought one separately. Now this guy went like this. The crushed copper sleeve is our gasket. It is a bi-directional, so if it's backwards, it's not, that'll still fit. And we've got our torque wrench 
set to 65 foot pounds. And since it's only one bolt, we're just gonna go all the way. What? Oh man. Yeah? That's probably why that was leaking. What? Um, your uh, oil pan gasket here is a little messed up. Was that leaking? It, yeah, oh. that's why the starter's all. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, well. yeah. Uh, See, that's it would be a good way it's stay. Wave. Hold on. If we have the oil pan out, this is like the only time we're gonna replace that gasket. It might make sense to get a new oil pan gasket. So we ended up getting a new gasket anyway. Um, the old gasket's not that old, but Phil noticed something wrong with the other one, and we would just we would know we would hate ourselves if we didn't end up replacing it while we have the pan off. So here we go, we got a new one. All right. So all the oil pan bolts are tightened. Uh, we've got to throw the oil filter housing back on, and. Drop the engine back down, and we should be good to go. I think so. So this is our 10W30 full synthetic. Because we are finally broken in, which means we're switching from our crude oil to our synthetic oil. And I picked 10W30 because we're in Florida, and we don't drive in sub-zero temperatures, so 530, 5W30 is not necessary. And I don't know that much about oil anyway, so 10W30 it is. <laughs> oh, we gotta prime it, prime the pump. You're right, there's a new so pump. what are you gonna do now? We're gonna prime the pump. Um, I think you're supposed to do this outside the engine, but we're just going to, since since we have fuel and spark on separate switches, we can crank over the engine and get it pulling uh, oil through it without the fuel and spark doing what they're supposed to be doing. So we can just keep cranking it and it won't start. So we're gonna do that for a couple of cycles, see what our oil level is afterwards, and then uh, hopefully start it and see our pressure. All right, that should be enough. Can't imagine needing more than that. Oh man, look at that, Phil. Come here, look at this shot. Dead center. We are dead center. First two dots, full. Second two dots, empty. We couldn't have made that more perfect. So, final step. We need to check our oil pressure. So we have this oil pressure gauge that is leaking so much oil uh, which is why it's out here in the engine bay. But at least we'll be able to see the pressure when I go start it up right now. Tell him to cut it, cut it, cut it. Oh, never mind, never mind, never mind. Oh, sorry, we had zero oil pressure for a minute there. Well, yeah, that makes sense. And then it went up. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, what are we looking at? 40. That's better. That's definitely better. So we're gonna let it run for a little bit um, and let it get the oil warmed up. We're already at 40 PSI, which is much better than we were at idle before while it was cold because we were at 60 PSI before. So we're gonna let it warm up a little bit and then start giving it some revs and see where the revs take us as far as our pressure goes. So that was absolutely perfect. If we're following the second rule of thumb I said at the beginning of the video, where you want to be at 1,000 or 30 PSI at the beginning and then add 10 PSI for every 1,000 RPM you're at, is exactly what we got with the engine at least closer to operating temperatures than cold. At 1,000 we were at 40, and then 2,050, and so on. So at 5,000 RPM we were sitting right around 70 PSI, which is absolutely perfect. The pump swap to the standard pressure pump was exactly what we needed. So I definitely don't recommend a high pressure pump unless you really need one for something. <laughs> it was kind of a hard install because you have to drain the pan and everything. And we did have to hoist the engine up a little bit. We weren't able to completely clear it without lifting it up a small amount, but we only had to undo one engine mount. 
and that gave us just enough clearance to be able to lift the engine up enough to be able to slide the pan right out from where it needed to go. Do you what about add? your promised video about zero to 60 times? Oh, we're definitely going to do zero to 60 times for <laughs> sure. Definitely, definitely going to happen, especially now that we know our oil pressure is right where we need it to be. Um, something we want to do, obviously, is get this oil gauge into the car because that way we'll be able to see the oil pressure while we're driving. That way we, it doesn't go to zero on us and then we just have surprise issues. Yep. <laughs> but um, we'll get to that just chipping away one thing at a time until this car is as perfect as we can get it to be. So what do you think? Do you want to outro us? Um, if you like the video, like the video. If you want to see more, uh, subscribe for more. And we'll catch you on the next one.